Good morning. It's nice to be with you again for another uh, session, for another practice. Today, we are going to have a grounding sequence. Grounding is a uh, grounding sequence puts you in a place where you are, can be calm and it will give you a feeling of security and safe, safety. So that's why I'm gonna, I, I, I've prepared grounding sequence for us to cope with the situation that we are in. I hope you would enjoy. It's a full of standing poses and then we will have a peak pose which is a closed hip and standing in one leg, which is our extended hand to big toe. In uh, Sanskrit, it is called Hastapadangustasana. So I will just give you a preview of our peak pose. It's the A and C. So we will have to stand on one leg and then lift the other leg. So this is Hastapadangustasana A or extended hand to big toe A, and this is the C. So we will prepare our body for this for this peak pose. Don't you worry. We will be, uh, you'll be given modifications. And for the props that you might need, we will need a block. If you have one or two blocks, then much better. If a block is not available for you, then a sturdy shoe box and or the stool. So this can is this is also this works well too. And then um, a towel. If you don't have a strap that you can loop on your foot when you lift it, you can use a long hand towel. So let's begin. Let's all prepare the props. Keep them handy. You can just place them on the side of your mat. But in the beginning, we will need the strap or the hand towel. So we'll place the block just on the side and the, and the stool just in case we will need it. Okay, let's start by lying down on our back. You may remove the hair tie to let the head rest comfortably on your mat. And then if you don't have a hair tie, much better. Let's settle on our mats. Letting our body melt, allowing the body, the body melt on the ground. Letting the sides of your feet drop on the mat. Wiggle your toes, fingers. Roll the shoulders towards the mat to give a little lift on your chest and heart. Rotating the palms up towards the ceiling. And let's breathe normally a couple of or several times. Listening to your body, observing which part of your body are still tense. Or if they are already relaxed. Noticing the sound around you. Just let those noise or those 
sound passed through you. No judgment. Not pursuing that sound. Just observing the environment around you. Next, let's uh, build our breath. Let's start by inhaling and exhaling just through your nose, closing the mouth. Even out the breath, you may count three on your inhalation and exhalation just to even them out. And just letting your breath become fluid. And let's start with our four parts breath. Inhale, belly. Inhale, sides of the ribs. Inhale, up to the chest and hold the breath. And slowly exhale up to the sides of the ribs, to the belly. Completely exhale out and pause. So that's the composition of our four parts breath. Inhale, pause. And exhale, pause before we proceed with another cycle of breath. Let's do it several times on our own. Just observing the slow inhalation, filling up the belly, the ribs and the chest, and holding the breath, and slowly exhaling to the ribs, to the belly, and completely exhaling out and observing a little pause before we inhale again. You may start your Ujjayi Pranayama if you're familiar to it. But if not, let's just continue with inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Now back with your deep breath and slowly make some movements with your toes, movements with your fingers. Press each fingertips with your thumbs to revive or to wake up the senses of your fingers. You make close fists and open the palms. And from here, toes touching, bring your toes together, lift the arms over the head, interlacing the fingers, and make a full body stretch, stretching the arms, the legs, that pulls your midway, middle body. And from here, hug your knees to your chest slowly, Rolling your back clockwise and counterclockwise. You may do it several times. Two to three. I mean three to five rotations if you wish. And once you're done with your rotation clockwise and counterclockwise, just stay here and Hug the knees close to the chest and bring your forehead and the knee. Squeeze it tight. And slowly release your feet down on the mat. Walk your feet to the edges of the mat and slide your knees together. 
and just rest your palms on top of the belly. Allowing the sacrum of the ground on the mat, the lower back, the pelvis. Couple of breaths. And from here, walk your feet to hip with wide distance. Knees are parallel to each other. And let's perform some cat and cows on this lying down pose. So you may touch the heels to measure your feet, how close it is to your buttocks or to your body. And on the inhale, lift your arms over the head, lifting the or arching the back away from the mat. So this is your cow. And as you exhale, lift the arms towards the ceiling and then towards the ground, grounding the lower back on the mat, tucking the tailbone towards the navel. One, two to three more times. Inhale, lift the arm, arch the back. Spine is lifting away. Shoulders are grounding on the mat. And exhale, slowly ground your spine. One bone at a time on the mat. And then swing your arms towards the ground. Two to three more times on your own. Inhale. Exhale. Tucking the belly, tailbone in. Inhale, lift the chest, arch the back. Exhale, ground. Inhale, swing your arms up. Exhale, swing your arms down. Two more times. Exhale, down. Inhale, swing the arms up. Chest up. Exhale, grounding the spine. And release back to your neutral spine. From here, you may just rest the palms down, pressing on the mat. Or you may hold on to the sides of your mat. So those are an odd options. Another option is to keep your arms on a T pose. So arms on this side. And or arms on a cactus pose, bending the elbows, and then palms are turning up towards the ceiling. We will wake up our abdominal muscles. Since we are gonna, we'll, we ha we'll have a lot of standing poses, we also need to strengthen the abdominals and our uh, back muscles to keep the torso upright every time we are on a standing pose. So you choose the, the, the placement of your arms and from here, keeping the knees bent, lifting the feet up and as you inhale, circle the knees away from the waist to the right, left. And as you exhale, press them towards the chest. Let's practice it again. Inhale, circle the knees away from the chest exhale circle them back to the chest let's do this several times on this direction and center inhale away exhale back to the chest last two inhale circle away exhale chest Inhale, circle away, and exhale back to the chest. Now let's do it this on the opposite direction. Inhale, circle away, left to right, and back to the chest. Exhale, inhale, rotate. Exhale, chest. Inhale, circle away. And to the chest. Last two. Inhale. Circle away. Exhale. Inhale. Circle. Exhale. Back to the chest. Now let your feet rest on the ground. Hands on the side. Turn the palms up. And from here, let's extend our legs. 
And let's practice our peak pose while we are on our mat. Tadasana na first. Since standing poses, all standing poses, the blueprint of all standing poses is our Tadasana or Samastitihi. So let's um, refine our Tadasana while we are on the mat. Toes are touching, heels are slightly apart. Feet are flexed or ankles are flexing, spreading your toes wide. And when you spread your toes wide, your pinky toe is spreading towards your face or towards the head. Lifting the kneecaps. And then you are firming the front side of your thighs or your thighs. Rolling the inner legs in. Hugging the outer hips in. Opening the front hip bones, and then you are knitting the navel and your front ribs in. When you knit the ribs and the navel, you will notice that your spine is grounding more on the ground or on the mat. And then rolling your shoulders or spreading your collarbones wide. Shoulders are touching the mat this time. Palms are on this side. Palms are turned up towards the ceiling. And release the leg. Release the spine. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Toes touch. Heels are slightly apart. And then the outer ankles. Press them in. So that when we are standing, we are activating the arches. The arches of our feet are supporting the weight and then lifting the kneecaps firming the thighs rolling the inner legs front ribs and navel are knitting in shoulders rolling towards the ground palms are turning up towards the ceiling and release okay from here Let's hold on to the strap. Grab the strap or your towel. So for those who don't have, whose towel is just available, no strap, I will show you first. Okay, inhale. Let's start with the right leg. Bend the right knee and hug the knee to your chest. Now loop the towel at the base of your toes and come here. Keep your left leg firm as if you are in your standing pose. And inhale, extend the right foot up. When you extend the right leg, you just don't extend it up. You can slightly bend the knee if your hamstrings is hurting. And then when you spread your toes, I'll just show you. When you spread your toes, when you spread your toes, you are averting instead of inversion. You, when you flex, flex from the ankle and then avert. It's something like the toes are turning to the side. It's not inwards. Okay. Again, let's continue. And here, you are drawing your leg to your hip socket. And then your hip is pulling away from the waist. The knees are straight. How to straighten the knee? How to keep your knee straight? By firming the thighs. But they are not locked. Okay. Inhale and then slowly release. Other side. So, firm the right leg first. Bend the left knee. Loop the towel. Or loop your strap. And then slowly lift the left leg up towards the ceiling. Flexing from the ankle and then turning, turning your toes, most especially your pinky toe towards the head. Keeping the arm straight and then pulling the leg towards the hip socket and your arm, you're also pulling it towards your shoulder socket. Left hip is pulling away from your waist and then slowly Release. So that's our peak pose on the mat. Okay, from here, hug your knees to your chest. Turn onto the right side. Lay your head on your arm. And then slowly push yourself up to your sitting pose. 
So coming from the sitting pose, since we have already had our cat and cows on the spine, we will just stretch, we'll just have the arms, shoulders, and the side body stretch. Okay. From here, inhale, lifting the arms. Exhale, bend the elbows. And inhale from here and exhale, rotate the palms down. Inhale, lift the arms up and up. Again, inhale, exhale, bend the elbows and rotate the palms down. Inhale, rotate the arms up and raise it up. Two more times. Inhale and exhale down, rotate down. Inhale, rotate up, raise up. Last one. Exhale, bend and rotate down. Inhale, arms up and raising up. From here, let's start with this laterals with our side body stretch. Inhale and exhale, lean to the left. Resting the left palm down and then slightly bending the elbows. Keep the right arm reaching up and over your ears. You're turning the trunk to the side or you, or you are also gazing up to your bicep if, if it's accessible. If not, just looking forward is also fun. Inhale, swing the right arm up and towards the right this time. Rest the right palm down, slightly bending the right elbow, reaching the left arm up and over. Keep grounding the left sitting bones, feeling the stretch on the side of the trunk. Inhale, center. Let's switch to our left side, grounding the right sitting bones more. Soft, just a soft touch of your left palm on the mat. Inhale, center, lean to the right. You may gaze forward or you may gaze up your bicep. Last one. Inhale, lean to the left. Inhale, center, exhale, lean to the right. And inhale, center, and rest the left palm down. Let's warm up our shoulders. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, rotate and interlace your fingers at the back. I'll just show you. I will move. Keep the arms pulling and pressing towards the mat. And from here, inhale, and keep your palms interlaced or keep your fingers interlaced. And from here, bend the elbows and bring both palms that are interlaced towards the left waist. Spreading the collarbones wide, lengthening the spine. Hold and release again. Arms at the center, pulling away from the shoulders. And inhale. And place both palms to your right waist. Spreading the collarbones wide. Hold it here. Feeling the stretch on your shoulder joints. And exhale, release. Arms are pulling away from the shoulders. And release. From here, let's proceed to our tabletop. So when you are on your tabletop, your pointer finger is always straight forward. The rest of the fingers are pointing on the side. Press on the mound or the middle part of your palm so that you are distributing the weight. You are not placing the weight on the wrist, but you, when you place the weight here, you are also distributing the weight on the fingertips. Keeping the alignment of your palms under the shoulders, knees under the hip, knees are hip width wide, palms are shoulder width wide. So from here, we will proceed with our downward facing dog. Tuck your, tucking the toes, lift the hips towards the ceiling. Okay, let's focus on the alignment part of our knees. Knees are tracking with your second and third toe. So heels are a little bit outwards. And let's bend the right knee, keeping the left leg straight. 
pressing both palms down or your fingertips and let's switch extend the right leg bend the left knee hold and switch to the right leg and switching to the left now if you want to make it fast a dynamic stretch you are also welcome to do so by lifting the heels and keeping the toes on the ground, you are also warming up your toes. Okay, from here, let's stay with our downward facing dog. This is our downward facing dog. Let's refine the downward facing dog before we proceed with the full practice. So you are pressing the mound of your thumb and then all of your fingertips. Lifting the forearms, rolling the triceps towards the ears, and then your biceps are rolling away from the ears. Spreading the collarbones wide, lifting the hips towards the ceiling. To keep the back straight, you have to knit the belly and the front ribs in. And then grounding the heels down on the mat. Your tailbone is lengthening towards the heels. If this is not possible, you can slightly bend the knee. If it's still hurting your hamstrings, you can walk your feet up to the edge of the mat and then ground the heels down. You are always welcome to, to, to bend the knees at your, the most uh, comfortable pose for you. And from here, inhale, look forward. And we will shift to our plank. You may slide your feet back. Opening the hips. The front hips. And then you are pressing the thighs towards the ceiling to protect your lower back from sagging down. And again, inhale from here. Lifting the hips up to your downward facing dog. One more time. Inhale, shifting to your plank. Pressing on your fingertips, finger knuckles. Exhale, downward facing dog. And inhale, look forward. From here, you may walk your palms towards the feet this time. Adjusting your feet to a hip width wide. Tracking the knee with your second and third toe. Halfway lift. You may place the palms under the shoulders and let it stay on the fingertips. Let's do some cat and cows here again. Inhale. So if this is not possible, you can hold on or grab on to your stool. Since I only have one block, I will need the stool to make my palms even. Feet are hip width wide. Palms on top of on my on my stool to elevate the ground and inhale spread the collarbones wide belly down tailbones up and exhale fold letting the back and your head surrender towards the ground so you can still stay here use the stool or the blocks to support you Inhale, halfway lift, cow, and exhale, full. Keeping your knees parallel, and inhale, lift halfway, hands on your hips, and let the spine roll on top of each other, and come up to your standing pose. Let's on with our practice. Let's educate our legs on how to stand properly. You will use a block this time. If a block is not available, the shoe box will be a good substitute for your block. So, let's begin. So, I hope you have your shoe box with you. And let's begin. Let's start with our Tadasana since this is the blueprint of all standing poses. Place the block in between the thighs. Can be this way or can be this way. 
So, toes are touching. Can be toes touching or not. Depends on your body structure. Heels are slightly apart. Okay, when I say press your outer ankles in. This is your outer ankle. So, press them in. Press them in so that the inner and the outer arches are activating, spreading the collarbones. Spreading and spreading all of your toes. And then, squeeze the block and roll it towards the back. So that's how you engage the inner legs. Belly in, front ribs in, arms on the side. Let's do some half sun salutation. From here, inhale, lifting the arms. As you lift the arms, try to roll it in. Tricep, since the tricep is at the back, roll the tricep in, and then your bicep is rolling away from the ears. Collarbones are wide. To relax the trap so it's not like that so it's more of spreading the collarbones rolling the arms in and exhale fold let us not forget the squeezing of the block while we are here again you are welcome to use the stool or a block that where you can place your hands if not you can hold on to the cuffs Halfway lift, inhale. If you don't have a block or a stool, hold on to the shins, not the knees. Exhale, fold. When you are on the fold, you are shifting your weight. Your heels are still flat, but you're putting the weight more on the base of your toes and your toes. If Keeping the knee straight is too hard. You are always welcome to bend the knees and tailbones are lifting towards the sky. But your, I mean, sitting bones or your hips are lifting towards the sky, but your tailbone is lengthening towards the heel. So it's just like your downward facing dog. And slowly inhale, bend the knees, pressing from the heel, slowly come up. Rolling the arms in and exhale, release to your Tadasana. One more time. Inhale, lifting the arms, squeezing the blocks in and rolling it towards the back. And exhale, fold, swing your arms down towards the mat. You may hold onto the calves, hold onto the block. Halfway lift, inhale on the halfway lift. Weight is also on more weight is pressing on the base of your toes. Can be flat back, but spread your collarbones wide. Exhale, fold. Learn how to release the back and the head towards the ground. And bend your knees, pressing your heels more this time. And slowly come up to your standing pose. And hands on the side, some steps. Okay, let's release the block. Let's go on with our sun salutation A. We'll do this four times. I'll be doing sun salutation A in progression. So for those who are practitioners, you are always welcome to do the full sun salutation A on the four sets that I will be doing. But for my self-practice, I always do the progression. I always practice the progression just to slowly prepare my body for the full sun salutation. It's just a suggestion. Okay, let's start. Let's begin. Sun salutation. Toes together. Tracking the knee with your second and third toe. Lifting the kneecaps. Firming the legs in. Knitting the front ribs and belly in. Collarbones are spreading wide. Inhale, lifting the arms. Rolling the triceps in and biceps out. Exhale, fold. Shifting the weight on the front side of your feet. Noticing the knees if they are parallel. Halfway left. You may hold onto the shins. Collarbones are spreading wide. Pressing on the base of your toes and exhale, fold, bend both knees generously. Watch out for your fingers. Point your fingers always straight forward. The rest of your fingers are on this side. And palms are under the shoulders. And step back with the right foot, followed by the left. 
Stay on the plank, belly in, ankles are pressing towards the back of the room, and exhale, lifting the kneecaps. I'm sorry, sorry, my bad. Lifting the hips towards the ceiling, and staying on your downward facing dog. You may adjust your feet closer if you need to. So it's belly in, arms are rolling, the tricep is rolling towards the ears, and then biceps are rolling away. Lifting the forearms off of the mat to press all of your finger knuckles more. Aligning your knees with your second and big second and third toe. And on the next inhalation, look forward, bend both knees, and slowly walk towards the top of the mat. Halfway left, inhale, exhale, fold, and then slowly rise up, reaching the arms up and exhale hands on the side so that's the first version next inhale lifting the arms this is your urdhva hastasana exhale fold as you fold this is your uttanasana letting the back and your head go if you if this is accessible you may extend your legs and align your hips above your heels. That is if it is only accessible. Halfway left, this is your Ardha Uttanasana. So same with the Uttanasana, aligning the hips over the ankles, pressing more on the front side of the feet. Exhale, bend both knees, palms on the side, and step the right foot back, followed by the left. So if in the first option, we stayed on the plank. This time, we will add another version. Inhale and shift forward. Rest the knees down. Rest the top of your toes. And exhale. Slowly bend the elbows towards the feet. Slowly bringing the belly towards the mat. Okay, from here, we will add cobra. Lift the right leg up and press it down press the top of your to top of your foot and all of your toes down on the ground followed by the left toes are touching feet are knee, heels are a little bit uh, away from each other and from here adjust your palms palms are uh, is in line with the bottom part of the rib and pressing the thighs towards the ceiling, sliding your chest forward. As you slide your chest forward, shoulders are rolling away from the ears. The action of your palms, although it's not visible, is sliding back instead of pressing down towards the mat. Keep the elbows tucked in and then slowly release. Inhale, tuck your toes. Press yourself up, yourself up to your tabletop, and exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, let's relax first on our downward facing dog. Let's let our head dangle. You may just shake your head side to side, front and back, and back to center, back to your down dog. Inhaling and exhaling to the nose, keeping the breath fluid. Inhale, look forward, slightly bend the knees and walk your feet towards the top of the mat. Halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, slightly bend the knees, press from the feet, slowly roll up, reaching the arms up and exhale, hands on the side. Okay, last two. Before we reach the fun, the full sun salutation A. Inhale, lifting the arms. Exhale, Uttanasana. Halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, palms down. And you may step or jump back as you wish. Right leg back. 
Followed by the left plank, shift forward, rest the knees down, and tuck your toes. I will add half chaturanga. So from here, bending the elbows, you are welcome to, to do the first two options if this is not accessible. Inhale and keeping the belly in, slowly bending the elbows to your half chaturanga and top, pressing the top of your toes. You may now proceed to your cobra, the high cobra. Okay, let's add upward facing dog. Adjust your toes, pressing all of the toes down, the top of your feet, pressing the thighs towards the ceiling, adjusting the palms at the side of the rib. The elbows are tucked in and lifting the chest up, collarbones wide, and slowly extend the arms. Keep the thighs firm and pressing towards the ceiling to protect the lower back. And as you exhale, using the belly and the back muscles, lifting the hips towards the ceiling, downward facing dog. Okay, let's inhale through the nose and exhale forcefully through the mouth. <sighs> let's do it two more times. Inhale. Exhale, ha, last one, inhale, exhale, lift or lifting towards the sky, tailbone lengthen towards the heel, thighs are pressing back, forearms are lifting away from the mat, rolling the triceps in, collarbones are spreading wide. Belly is knitting in. On the next inhale, look forward, bend both knees. And it's either you walk forward or you may step the right foot forward, followed by the left. Halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold. And inhale, roll up to your Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands on the side. Last one. This is the full sun salutation, which is... Uh, which will include straight to Chaturanga coming from Ardha Uttanasana and then upward facing dog and then downward facing dog. So you are welcome to choose from the first three if you want the plant to down dog or plant to cobra or plant to cobra upward facing dog. We will all meet at the downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, fold. Now your choice, halfway lift, exhale, you may step or jump back. It's up to you if you want to go cobra or go straight to your upward facing dog and exhale on your downward facing dog. Keeping the breath fluid, evening out the breath. Belly in, hips are lifting up, thighs are pressing back, forearms lifted, inhale, look forward, bend both knees and you may walk, step forward or jump forward, halfway lift, exhale, fold, inhale, roll up, exhale, hands on this side. Okay, let's do our Openers for external rotation of the leg. Inhale, and you may step your right foot or your left foot towards the back as long as you face the, the screen. From here, let's practice Arthadasana feet. Pressing the outer ankles in. So heels are a little bit out outwards then the, the toes the pinky toe and let's start with our right leg inhale and turn the right foot towards the right side of the room bending the right knee as you bend the right knee track the knee with your second big toe notice if it is buckling in keep it straight and on top of your ankle. 
So from here, this one, the left leg is rolling in. Toes are pointing on this side. You are pressing more on the side of your left foot. Lifting your front ribs here. Or I mean, lifting your the front hip bones and keeping the belly and front ribs in. Inhale, T the arms. Your left shoulder is leaning back while your right shoulder is keeping straight. Gazing at the third finger, stay here and just listen to your body. Keeping the alignment, feeling if your body's adjusting to this pose. And on the next inhalation, you may use the block or inhale, exhale, fold with your left palm, hold it onto the left hip first and the forearm. Place it on top of your right thigh. You can stay here and lift the left arm up towards the ceiling and bring it over your ears and your left, left side of the trunk is rolling towards the ceiling. So you're welcome to stay here. Another option is getting the block. You may place the block on the inner side of your right foot. Right, left arm up and over the ears. Another option is you can turn the height down to, to the medium or to the lowest height. Or you can place the block on the outer side of your right foot. Adjust the height. It's up to you, your choice. And this is your Parshvakonasana. Right shoulder is leaning back. Your belly is lifting away from your right thigh. On the next inhalation, look down. Swing your left arm up. Pressing from the side of your left foot. Slowly come up. And extend the leg hands on the hips. Now adjust your stance to a medium stance. You may walk your left foot closer. Still on a Tadasana foot or Tadasana stance, T the arms, we will proceed with our triangle. Inhale, pull the right hip back. But even if you pull the right hip back, keeping the left hip in. Pull the right hip back, lean forward. You may use the block. Grab onto the block, place it on the outer side of your right foot or medium or lowest height or you may hold on to the shins keep lifting the left arm up it's a side stretch so lean the left shoulder back right shoulder is twisting forward keeping the left hip in don't let it rest keeping it in right hip is pulling back Left arm is reaching up while the right palm is reaching down. Inhale, look down and slowly come up to your standing pose. Hands on this side. Turn the right foot in. Now we'll all do this on the left side. Now we'll, we'll adjust our stance to a wider stance again. You may adjust your feet first. Bend your knees and walk your feet together. Shake the legs. Focus on the breath. Okay, from here, let's make a wide stance. So remember, the Tadasana feet, step the right foot back, and then slide your left foot back, uh, wider. You may adjust your stance with your ankles, with your wrist, ankles under the wrist for a wide stance. Just for your um, reference. Okay, inhale and turn the left foot towards the side, bending the left knee, tracking the knee over the ankle and with your second toe, pressing the side of your right foot, the right leg is rolling in, you are feeling the stretch on this side of your body, the psoas, and then your hips is not 
pointing to the left, but it's diagonally, diagonally slanting to the side. Inhale through the arms, keeping the gaze on your middle finger. Right shoulder is leaning back. Left shoulder is twisting forward, keeping the belly in. Let's listen to our body, keeping the tracking of our knees. One more deep breath. And exhale, release. You may get grab onto the clock before we proceed with our Parshvakonasana. So, you have the choice of bringing the forearm on top of your left thigh or using the block or no block at all. It can be on the inner part or outer side. And then the left arm is reaching up. And then turning over the ears, you're always welcome to gaze at your tricep or you gaze forward, lifting the belly off of your thigh, keeping the legs strong. Breathe. And on the next inhalation, look down, swing the left right arm up and let it carry you to your standing hands on the hips, extend. Now let's adjust. A medium stance. Okay, from here, let's do our triangle. Keeping the left hip in, pull the left thigh, right hip in. Pulling the left thigh back, inhale, see the arms lean forward and fold. You may use the block or you may just hold on to the shin. It's a side stretch, so your torso is twisting towards the ceiling. Left arm is reaching up, right hip is spinning in. You may gaze forward or you may gaze up. One more deep breath, feeling the stretch on this side. Inhale, look down slightly, bending the right knee, come up to standing. Turn your left toes forward, bend both knees, and you may step or jump your feet together. And Tadasana, Samasthi. Okay. From here, we will start with a build up for our feet pose. Toes touch, sun salutation, B. Toes touch, knees parallel, lifting the kneecaps, firming the thighs, ribs in, navel in, collarbones wide. And from here, inhale, lifting the arms and sit low to your chair. When you are sitting low, you may lift all of your toes to ground all the corners of your feet. And instead of leaning your knees forward, you're pressing the shins back and you are drawing your hips back. Don't forget the belly or contracting the belly in to keep the back straight and exhale, fold. Uttanasana, halfway left. Ardha Uttanasana, exhale, pressing the palms down. Okay, your choice here, plant to down dog, plant to cobra, plant to upward facing dog. We will all meet on our downward facing dog. You may step or jump back. Don't forget the breath. Now we'll all meet on our downward facing dog. From here, Inhale, lift the right foot up, keeping the alignment of your hip. The right hip is not lifting. Instead, it is still aligned with your left hip. And inhale, shift the plank, bend the knee, knee to your chest. If this is not possible, bring your knees down first and step the right foot towards the, lat, the right palm. You may use your hand to adjust the foot. So that is an option. If this is accessible, inhale, lift the right leg, knee to chest, and step the right foot beside the right palm. Turn or spin the left heel down. 
keep the alignment. If it is accessible, align your ankle, right ankle to your left ankle. If it's not, if it, you are not stable with it, you can walk your feet to a wider stance and then angle your left foot to a two o'clock from the clock. So the heels are really turned out. And from here, inhale, bend the right knee, keeping the knee over the ankle. Left thigh is firming, belly off of your thigh, lift the arms towards the ears, and pull the upper body upwards. Right hip, right hip is pulling back. So as you pull this back, this rolls in more. Warrior one. Exhale, fold, step back. We will all meet on our downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. And we'll do it on the left side. Again, you are welcome to proceed to your tabletop and step the right foot towards the left palm. If this is accessible, left leg up, shift to plank, and step the left foot beside the left palm. Spin the back heel down, angle your right foot to a 10 o'clock, pull the left hip back, bend the left knee, raise the arms towards the ear, belly off of the thigh, and come up to your warrior one. You can bring the left hip lower if you wish, pressing from the side of your right foot, exhale, fold. We will all meet again on our downward facing dog. Stay on the down dog if you want, you may rest here. Or if you really want to rest it out, you can bring your knees down, toes, to, toes touching, heels touching, knees together, and rest the forehead down. Arms on the side. Child's pose. So inhale and exhale. Recover with your breath while you are on your downward facing dog. And on the next breath, inhale, come up to your tabletop, tuck your toes, lifting the hips up, downward facing dog, and inhale, look forward. So it's either you walk or step forward or jump forward, halfway lift. Exhale, hold, and inhale, sit low, lifting the arms up to your chair. From here, we will proceed with our eagle. So, coming from the chair, let's start with the right leg. Lift the right leg up, cross it once or twice. Keep pulling the right hip back. And from here, arms are forward and cross. Right arm down, left arm up, bend from the elbows and let the palms touch. Lifting the elbows to spread the collarbones wide. And release to chair and press up to standing. Hands on the side, padasana. Shake the legs. We'll still do it on the left side. And inhale to your chair. Lift the left leg up. Cross it once or twice. Pull the left hip back. Arms forward. This time, as you cross, left arm down, right arm up. Lifting the elbows. And release the arms, release the leg, and press up. Hands on the side. Okay. How are you feeling? You will feel more tired now than the previous uh, sequences because we are all working on the legs. And legs is a big part of our, uh, our big muscles. So the front and back are considered big muscles of our body. Okay, from here, you can stay here and step wide. Again, if we st start on our Tadasana, hands on the hips, bend the knees and step wide. We'll do our Rasalita poses. Feed the arms to measure your ankles if they are under your wrist. Inhale from here, Lift the arms up and exhale, 
fold. As you fold, just let the palms rest under the shoulders. Halfway lift, the elbows are lifting towards the sky. And exhale, you may walk your palms back. Or if this is not accessible, you may use the block or your stool again. So here or here, turn it down and rest it, the forearms here. Turn it here, rest the forearm, keep the head or the, the crown on the mat. So that is an option. But if you are, if this is accessible, walk your palms towards and align them with the feet. Point your fingers straight forward, the rest of your fingers on the side, tucking the elbows in. Legs are straight, but knees are soft. Inner legs are rolling in. Inhale, halfway lift, walk, walk your palms forward. Bend the knees, hands on the hips, and then slowly come up to your White stance. One more time. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, rotate the arms at the back, holding the back of your hips. Spreading the collarbones wide. Shoulders are rolling back. Inhale and exhale, fold. As far as you can. Pressing the outer ankles in. Inhale, halfway lift. Soft knees and slowly come down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, rotate the arms at the back. Interlace the fingers. Roll the shoulders back to open the chest. Keep the palms falling back towards the ground this time. And inhale and exhale. Fold. As you fold, keep the elbows soft. And the arms are pulling this time towards the ceiling. Halfway lift. Inhale, soft knees. And slowly come up. Last one. Okay, adjust your stance. If you notice that your feet are, or your toes are sliding outwards, adjust them and point the toes in. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, fold. Okay, and then hold on to your big toes to the first three fingers if accessible. If not, just stay here and fold. If you are able to hold on to your toes, square the elbows and let the back and your head surrender towards the ground. Pressing the outer ankles in. Inhale, halfway lift. Place the palms down under the shoulders, slightly bending the knees, hands on the hips, and then slowly rise up to standing. Bend both knees and you may step your feet together. Hands on the side. Tadasana. Okay. Let's stay at the top of the mat. One sun salutation A and then our high lunge. And then we'll proceed with some twisting and to our big pose. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale. My bad, my bad. Prepare the block. Prepare the stool or the block in front of you because after the high lunge, we'll proceed with our warrior three. Inhale, lift the arms. Tadasana and Urdhvastasana. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift, exhale, palms down, step back to your plank, chaturanga your choice, and we will all meet on our downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up, you're always welcome to come down on your tabletop and step, sorry, right leg up, step the right foot forward, bend the right knee. Drop the knee over the ankle and your second big toe. The left foot stays on your toes, pressing the ankles or your left heel back. Okay, from here, if this is not accessible, you may bring the left knee down and come up to your low lunge. Now, if this is accessible, high lunge, inhale up. 
You can soften up the knee, hold the right hip back, roll the left leg in. This is a closed hip standing pose. Okay, this is your high lunge. From here, hands on the hips and you may walk your left foot closer. You may hold on to your stool or one block per one palm. And then slowly extending the right leg, lifting the left foot up, up to your hip. And then keeping the hip aligned, pull the left leg towards the left hip, pressing the left heel back, left toes are pointing down. So you are welcome to stay here or you're also welcome to bring your arms on this side or arms forward, and then slowly rest the left foot down. High lunge, exhale, fold. We will all meet an hour down and facing dog. And inhale, lift the right uh, left leg up. You're welcome to go down on your tabletop and step the left foot beside the left palm. Right foot stays on the toes, keeping the left right heel flexed. Bending the left knee. Inhale up to your low lunge. You're welcome to stay on your low lunge or to your high lunge. Pulling the left hip back. And exhale, hands on the side. Walk the right foot closer. You may hold onto the block. And go or go straight to your warrior three. Hands on this side or arms forward. And then rest to your high lunge. Exhale, fold. Step back. Let's all meet on our downward facing dog. Okay, inhale to the nose. Exhale forcefully through the mouth. Ha. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Ha. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Ha. Inhale. Look forward. You may walk or step forward or jump forward. Halfway lift. Exhale. Fold. Inhale. Roll up. Word by Svasana. Exhale. Hands on this side. Okay. Let's just do a twist. You may use the stool or two blocks. So step the left foot back first. Angle the left foot on the two o'clock. I'm sorry, left foot on the 10 o'clock. So square your hips forward, grounding the all corners of the feet. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, fold belly and front ribs in. You're welcome to stay here and hold on to your block. Or, if you wish, you can place the palms down on the fingertips. And one more deep breath. Inhale. And as you exhale, you may fold further. Or just stay wherever, um, whatever pose feels better on you. Letting the body discover when you can push yourself more and accepting where your body should stay. Halfway lift, hands on the hips, slightly bending the knee and roll up. Step the left foot forward. Now let's proceed to the other side. Step the right foot back. Angle the right foot to your two o'clock. You can keep the alignment of your heel to heel or you can step a little bit wider if you feel more stable with it. Inhale, lift the arms. You're welcome to use the block as you fold. Pulling the left hip back. But inner legs are rolling in. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold as far as you can. Discovering where it feels good on your body. Accepting where you should stop and let go. 
Inhale, halfway lift, soft knees, hands on the hips, and come up, and slowly step the right foot forward. Okay, so now, here is our big pose. So you, you may hold on to your towel. Let's start with the right. Or you may already place the strap on your right foot on the base of your foot. So I will be giving you options. I will show you how you use your props. If you feel that your, your balance or stability and standing in one leg is very much challenged, you may use a wall so this will serve as your mat. Okay, so from here, let's start with the right leg. Keeping the left leg firm, left all, grounding all corners of the left foot, rolling the inner leg in, inhale, and then slowly lifting the right knee up. You're welcome to stay here, or if you wish, you can lift the right knee higher, and hold on to the loop and extend the right leg. As you extend the right leg, keep the knee soft and pull the right arm towards your shoulder socket. Hold it here. Now, while I'm explaining for the next one. Okay, lift the right knee up. You may hold on to the right knee. Now your towel, loop it around the base of your foot and then slowly extend the right leg. Knees are always soft. They are straight, but they are soft. Pull the right arm towards the shoulder socket. Your foot is averting. So instead of turning it in towards the middle of the way, you are turning the foot towards your head. And inhale from here. Release the foot, but keep the right foot up. Hands on the hips. Keep the right leg firm, or left leg firm. And release the leg, shake the legs. Other side. So let's put the towel on the left shoulder. Place the strap on the left foot. So I'll use the towel first. So if you think you need a wall, again, stand against the wall. If you think you don't need it, then just stand freely on top of your mats. Inhale. And firm, ground the corners of your right foot, firm the leg, lift the left knee up, hold it here. This is an option, just holding the left knee and extend later. Now, let's use the towel first. Lift the left knee up higher, loop, and then extend the leg, flex the foot, avert your foot. So the this is inversion of the foot. This is aversion of the foot. So you have to turn your foot towards the side and then your pinky toe is flexing towards your head. Pull the, the, the arm to your shoulder socket, the leg to the hip socket. Hold. Now use your, your loop. So it's either you use the strap or the loop. Keep your arms straight. And from here, from the legs, release and keep the left leg high. Upper body straight, not leaning back. And release, shake the legs. Huh. So that's the peak pose. Now we'll try to close all the parts of our body that we open or we will counter all the poses. So just a quick sun salutation until we reach the ground. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Exhale, bounce down, step back. From plank, down to the belly. And it's either you do the cobra or the upward facing dog. And exhale on your downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward, cross your shins, and sit on the mat. Since we did a lot of folding this time, and standing, 
we will stretch the legs and the back. So from here, let's start by, let's start with our forward folds or the uh, back bend or let's start here. Bend the knees, feet are hip width wide. Let's start with our bridge. Remove the hair tie if you need to. Hold on to the ankles and inhale, lift the lower back. Upper back, tuck the shoulders, press the shins back. Hold and release. One more time. Inhale, lift the lower back, upper back, tuck the shoulders and press the shins back. Ground the heels down and release. Hug your knees to your chest. Roll it side to side. Hug the back of your knee and roll up to your sitting. Again, you may adjust your foot, walk it forward, place your palms back. Fingers are pointing towards the feet, rolling the shoulders back. We have three options for this pose. Inhale and extend and lengthen the spine, keep the arms straight. This is one option. Um, we provide options. So even if this is simple, as it may seem, you are uh, the, the the effect is still the same with the full version of the pose. So there's nothing bad in going to the modified version. So inhale and extend and lengthen the spine. Shoulders are rolling back. That's one. Another option is keeping your feet, keeping the feet, your feet hip width wide and inhale, lift to a reverse stable top, aligning the chin with the chest. This is a much um, strenuous or a deeper stretch for your shoulder joints. Keeping the hips open and release. So that's the second. Now, if you still want to go on and explore those together, Place the palms further back. Fingers are still pointing towards the feet and inhale and lift. Extend, open the hips. Thighs are pressing back. And release down. Okay, let's do some forward folds. Bend the left knee, place the left foot beside the right thigh. Inhale, lifting the arms. Again, your toes, your foot is averting. It's turning towards this side. Inhale, arms up. Contract the quads to release the hamstrings. You may hold onto the shins or to the sides of the foot or to the top of your toes. Knees are soft. And release. Other side. Extend the left leg. Bend the right knee. Place the left, right foot beside the left inner thigh. Left foot is averting. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, fold. And inhale, up. And release. Okay, let's bring our feet together. Toes touching, pressing the feet against each other. Extend the spine. Inhale and exhale. Curl the back. As far as you can. Grounding the sitting bones. Not letting them lift. Inhale up. Now let's do some twisting. Extend the left leg or extend the right leg. Rather extend the left leg. Bend the right knee and cross the right foot over to the left leg. So from here, inhale and hug the right knee in. And then with the right palm, just remind your lower back to lift and extend the spine. Then rest the right palm at the back on the fingertips. And then as you inhale, you will twist to the right, grounding the right sitting bones more. 
And then you're twisting from the waist, not only from the shoulders. You can keep your gaze forward or to the side or gazing at your right shoulder. You can turn and twist some more as you breathe in and out, keeping the left foot flexed. And then slowly release. We'll do it on the other side. Extend the right leg. Bend the left knee. Cross it over to the right. Hug the left knee with the right arm. Now, remind your lower back to lift and extend the spine, pressing the left fingertips at the back. Inhale, and as you exhale, twist from the waist, grounding the left sitting bones more, slightly bending the left elbow. You may gaze forward, gaze to the side, or gaze to the left shoulder. Keeping the left foot active and flex. Inhale, look forward and release. Okay, so from here, bend the knees. You may go on to your inversions if you wish. So a simple inversion can be just your, your fish which is placing a towel just behind, uh, below your shoulder blades and lying down on the mat. Another option is just place the block under your sacrum and just lift the legs, le legs up, feed the arms. So that's a simple inversion that you can take. You can also bring your legs sit behind, beside the wall Bring your legs up and stay here. So those are the options for your simple inversion. Now, if you are a practitioner of inversions, you may add any of the inversions that you like. But for now, we'll end with the Sukta Bada Konasana, placing the feet together, and then opening your knees wide. You may place the block on both sides of your knees or pillows underneath your knees to stretch the inner leg wherein we worked, really worked in today. At any time, oh, at any time that you're lying down, you may extend your legs and allowing the body to melt on the ground. Keeping the fluidity of your breath, but this time no more constricting and just the normal breath. Allowing the jaws to relax by parting the teeth. Feel heaviness on your feet, on your back. Letting the fingers curl on its own. Feeling heaviness on your forehead, eyelids, and eyebrows. Shavasana. So you can stay here longer, around 10 minutes. But for us, we will end it from here. Move your fingers, move your toes, feet together, arms over the head, interlace the fingers, turn your palms out, and make a big stretch. Hug the knees towards the chest, and roll on to your side, resting the head on your arm, keeping those, the, uh, your knees close to the chest, your hip is pulling away. And then slowly press yourself up to your sitting pose. Find a comfortable seat. If you want to use the block, you can use the block. Sit on the block to lift your hips higher than the knees and having a more comfortable sitting pose. Just resting the palms down on your knees, 
Let's do some recovery breaths. Inhale through the nose. One belly, two sides of the ribs, three is up to chest. Hold the breath. And exhale through the mouth, up to the side of the rib. Belly and completely exhale out and hold. Inhale, one, two, three, and hold. Exhale, one, two, three, hold. Last one. Inhale, one, two, three, and hold. Exhale, one, two, three, and completely exhale out. Palms together, hands to heart. And I thank you for the blessing of movement. And the blessing of time for the practice. Namaste. Thank you guys and have a good week ahead of you. Bye.